I invite you now to please just close your eyes as we go into our meditation together. Just place your feet flat on the floor or just relax into your cushion and just allow yourself to breathe naturally. And today, this beginning of Advent season, we turn our thoughts to faith. Faith that believe in our capacity to be hopeful. to be assured and to be strengthened as we embark on this wonderful journey of the faith that we are. Faith. Faith is that very thing that keeps us open to discovering all the reasons we have for hope. Faith, one of our 12 powers that gives us the assurance that our indwelling divinity leads us to accomplish all that we set out to achieve. Faith provides us with that fortification to transcend any limited human knowledge. Allowing that divine wisdom to guide our thoughts and our actions. And as we prepare to enter into our moment of silence today, we go into this silence with a belief in all of the good things that are to come. Belief in our ability to bring those things into manifestation. And we celebrate our gratitude for the gift of faith as we move into our moment of silence.
as you begin to bring your awareness back to this place. We once again acknowledge our gratitude for our gift of faith. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit within. And let's just allow ourselves to breathe that in for a moment. To breathe in all that wonderful faith that is. Namaste. And please join me as we sing together our new Lord's Prayer. Thank you, Pete. And thank you, Anya. I like the way you two looked at each other there at the end. Y'all did a really good job, Pete. Good job, Anya. Thank you so much. All right. So I am finding it difficult to believe that today is already, we're already going calmly into Christmas. It's already our first uh, you know, Sunday of Advent. And it just seems unbelievable that this year has, has gone by so quickly. But... So today is our first Sunday of Advent, and the subject today is hope. So I want to ask, you know, I want to start off by kind of just, just thinking about it for a moment. Um, what exactly is hope? You know, what is hope to you? Is hope something that's palpable? Is it seen? Is it felt? Is it heard? What is hope exactly, and what does it mean? What does it mean to you, perhaps? You know, what does it offer? Is it even real? Is it just imagined? Is it envisioned? Is it perceived? You know, is it faith? Is it hope in things that aren't seen? Those things that we haven't yet seen manifest? Is it God? Is it none of the above? Some of the above? Or maybe all of the above? Most importantly, what is hope to you? So I wanted to first start, we'll be using the uh, Unity Advent book called The Spirit of Christmas. So I want to start by reading just a little bit out of our Advent booklet in regards to hope. Most Christians focus on hope during the first week of Advent. In Unity, perhaps inspired by the view that faith is the assurance of things hoped for, we contemplate both hope and faith as we spiritually prepare our hearts and minds for Christmas. In the revealing word, Unity co-founder Charles Fillmore makes this distinction. Hope is the expectation of good in the future. It is subject to time. Faith is the certain knowledge that our good is ours right now. It goes beyond time and space. So we're going to talk about hope and faith today and about how hope can help launch us into faith. Now, Hebrews 11.1 1 in the Bible tells us, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. So it is through faith where we hold strong to the conviction of things not seen. And where we claim those things not seen is our good that is ours right now. But let's start with a question, however, because this is one I've heard on several occasions. What gives us faith? Now, ask most ministers across the spectrum, doesn't matter whether they're Unity, Baptist, Methodist, Catholic, whatever they are, most are going to tell you that nothing really gives you faith. That instead, faith is kind of already a knowing. It's back to the conviction of things not yet seen with the physical eyes. Sometimes, though, that concept isn't really so easy to grasp, is it? For instance, one might feel it's a little difficult to grasp the end of war if they're living in a war-torn country or if they're a victim of living in a war-torn country? How would that person be able to know with conviction that he or she was safe on a daily basis? Or that the war would indeed perhaps end one day? Now, Reverend Jim Rosemurgy, he's a unity minister in our book here, he addressed something of this nature in our booklet. He tells us of a counselor who listens to people, you know, as they share their problems and concerns. And the counselor, of course, doesn't have all of the answers. 
And sometimes they'll hear something and the counselor admits to sometimes feeling just as confused as the client. But the counselor began to notice that he would respond with, there is an answer. But that he would admittedly expand on that when he would state, I am as confused as you are, but I know that there is an answer. And what that answer did when he told that to the clients, it began to instill hope. Hope that there was indeed an answer out there to the solution. Admitting, you know, hey, I might not know what the answer is either, but I know it's out there. Hope in that is also okay. It's, it's also okay to admit that maybe we don't know the answer right then at that moment. But we do know that there is one. Conviction in things not seen. But it's true. There is always an answer. We might not know what the answer is during a certain event or during a certain situation. But we know that there is an answer out there. That is having faith. You may not be able to spout the answer right off, right then that you seek in the moment. But you have to trust. You have to hope and you have to know that it is there. That is faith. But it does take a little bit of strength to do that too, doesn't it? To trust in that process of faith. We tend to want to carry things around with us. And many times we happen to first cling onto the issue. And we allow the issue to instead become our focus. Now I don't know how you feel about that, but I fully believe it makes it so much more difficult to allow ourselves to begin to see the answer when we place all of our focus on the issue rather than on any potential solutions or answers. Notice how I snuck the word allow in there, though. How when we allow ourselves to focus on the issue or the problem at hand rather than the fact that there's an answer. And it's because you also have to be willing to allow yourself to believe that there is indeed an answer. So for some, for some assistance with this, I turn to Christian Healing by Unity co-founder Charles Fillmore. And he talks about how we often think of the word faith and we relate it to a kind of a religious experience. Now this kind of makes sense because Jesus and other people in the Bible, they mentioned faith numerous times. The Bible probably mentions it more reasons than we can count. So it stands to reason that we'd hear the word faith and automatically think religion or even spirituality. But in Christian Healing, Mr. Fillmore states, the idea that faith is something that has to do only with one's religious experience is incorrect. Faith is a faculty of the mind that finds its most, perf that finds its most perfect expression in the spiritual nature. But in order to bring out one's whole character, it should be developed in all phases. That is a power that it, that it is a power, this is really small writing, that it is a power is self-evident. People who have faith in themselves achieve far more than those who do not believe in their own ability. So faith is something that is a part of us. It doesn't mean we always use it as we should, but it doesn't negate the fact that it is very much a part of us. Sometimes we have to open the blinds a little bit more to let the sun into the room, right? We sometimes also need to do the same with faith. Not opening the blinds to the sun doesn't mean that the sun isn't there. It just means we may need to open the blinds a little more to let it in. And maybe we need to open the blinds a little wider to also let more faith begin to shine in. Again, though, it goes back to a willingness. You have to willingly... Open the blinds, allowing for it to shine in. And part of allowing it to be is allowing it to, as our book states, bring vision for new possibilities as it quietly turns to belief. And I think a little bit about money with this. Money came to my mind when I was writing this talk. Not having a whole lot of it in your checking account at any given moment doesn't mean that all the money supply in the world has dried up. There's plenty of it out there. We just need to get a little bit more of it into our account. But it's unlikely to happen if we always allow our focus to rest on the number 
that we don't want to see that's in our checking account at any given time. But we have to know that there's enough out there, and then we have to expect it to get there. And what's wrong with positive expectation? I mean, lots of times we certainly have no issue with negative expectation. So what's wrong with, as our Advent book states, remembering the good that is constantly being born through us? And a lot of that goes back to trust. Trusting that everything is always in divine order. That is a part of allowing, a part of that expectation. But it all starts with just a little spark of hope. We've all had times in our lives where we've likely grieved or been in a state of mourning at the loss of something or someone that we love. Whether it's through a death, you know, a transition of someone we love or something we love, the end of a relationship, something, we've all likely been there. And there were likely moments where you wondered if you would ever get through it. But then one day, one day you see something that puts a little smile back on your face. Perhaps the next day you look up at the sky and you notice the beauty of the sun and you appreciate the beauty of the sun. There's that spark of hope. There's that spark of hope that you will one day feel better again. And from that spark of hope comes faith. We've got to not just be hopeful that maybe one day we'll see the divine at work. We've got to know. We've got to have faith that the divine is at work. Already, Hebrews 6.19 of the Bible states, We have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. And then our book, our Advent book, mentions some of the best wisdom that I think I've ever truly read. And it's in the book on December 4th, and it's written by the most revered of spiritual teachers, a minister by the name of Reverend Evan Wilkins. This guy, you know, yeah, thank you. Thank Ann and Pete laughed. Ann and Pete laughed. But, you know, I got my book, and I'm like, man, this guy is full of some serious spiritual knowledge on December 4th. But all jokes aside, I did write about my time in ministerial school. And going back to school while holding down a full-time job, you know, responsibilities at home, it wasn't always the easiest thing to do. And, you know, it was the easiest thing I'd ever done. And, there were times I'd grow discouraged and I would wonder, I'd be like, how am I going to make it to walk across that stage one day? You know, I just started to merely hope that I would. Well, I hope I can walk across the stage one day. But my mind wandered back to Hebrews 11.1. 1. Remember, I mentioned that in the very beginning of this talk, and that's one of my favorite verses. Now, faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. So I realized that I needed to use that hope that I was feeling as a springboard to all-out faith. I needed to know. I mean, sure, it was sometimes difficult when I had a big project due at work that pulled me away from schoolwork. But I, need, I knew that I needed to know. And I needed to do that to make it manifest, to manifest myself actually walking across that stage one day. So hope is what we plant. Faith is what sprouts from that hope. Now Romans 5.5 5 in the Bible states, Hope does not disappoint us because God's love has poured into our hearts. Now another thing about hope and about faith is that we also need to believe in ourselves. That's perhaps the easiest thing to understand, but often the most difficult thing to practice. And I thought about concerts here when I was writing this. Now, I'm not sure whether people still do it or not at concerts. I haven't been to, to this type of concert in a long time, but remember stage diving? Somebody gets up on stage and they just dive right out into the crowd. And they expect people to, to catch them, and they expect people to, to pass them around, you know, to different people out there on the floor, on the concert floor. And we may far too often catch ourselves in this situation, not stage diving, I wouldn't recommend that, but to where we'll trust a group of people that we don't know to catch us and carry us around, which is fine. It's fine to trust other people. But we don't always necessarily have that same trust or belief in ourselves. Now, in our Advent book, Reverend Teresa Burton says that her belief in herself sometimes feels effortless. But how at other times, doubt, fear, insecurity, those kinds of things start to rule her day. 
And I know I'm often the same. Probably many of us are. Probably most of us are. You know, I believe that each and every week I'm going to be able to write and deliver at least some kind of a talk here on Sunday. Yet sometimes I sit down to write just one paragraph of my own creative writing, one paragraph that nobody else is even likely to see, and I'm wondering what in the heck I'm doing. That writer's block kicks in and it starts to play a nice little game of havoc with my mind. And why is it that we have so much faith in ourselves or in others but sometimes just not in ourselves. Now, practice, of course, plays a pretty big part of it. You know, it wasn't always easy for me to write talks, you know, here on Sundays. And there were times early on where I began to wonder if I could do it. I wondered if I'd be able to come up with a viable subject or even the materials that I needed to help me write it. But the more I did it, the easier it started to flow, you know, week from week. So, yeah, practice played a pretty big part, but there was also faith. You see, I knew those talks were something that I necessarily didn't even need to glean from other materials because all of those talks are inside of me already. And once I begin to trust that, I'll also begin to notice that any materials that I need to assist me always come to me. The subject always comes to me. What I need to say always comes to me. I begin to have faith in those things happen. Now, Reverend Teresa Burton states, there are times I call upon my faith to remember that God is always with me as the love in my heart, the passions of my soul, and the understanding that informs my mind. She goes on to say, my faith carries me through the hard times, helping me believe in better days ahead. My faith tells me rough patches are exactly that, temporary conditions I can overcome. My faith inspires me to dream big and to, fr- and to thrive. My faith reminds me I am so much more than human. I am divine. John 7, th- John 7, 38 from our Bible tells us, And let the one who believes in me drink. As the scripture has said, Out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water. So there may be times in our lives where things don't necessarily work out the way we'd envision. But it doesn't mean that we lose faith. We don't lose faith because we know that that whatever way it turns out is all working in divine order. And we trust that divine order is part of our faith. And we trust it to see us through the process and to know that all is indeed well. And remember, it starts with that spark. It starts with that spark of trust. And it starts with that spark of hope. So I invite you today to allow that spark of hope to be your launching pad. Your launching pad into full-on faith. It's already in you. It's already you. It's already a part of who it is that you are. You just have to allow it to be. Namaste. And now I am going to invite our popular guest again today, Ann Zinner, back up to the platform. And she's got a very special message to share.